This is the sixth episode from our India adventures. Cow, 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 cow. Over the last couple of weeks, we've shared how India started to get the better of us, pushed us the to our limits. The most horrible arrival into any city I think I've ever done, probably in 25 years on the road. Pollution, traffic, noise, and the sheer number of people gets a little overwhelming, especially for our two little boys. People, there's a guy literally bending increasing his face like this with a phone, trying to take his picture. Uh, so we made a drastic change, setting off in search of solitude and peace. And what we found is utter magic. This is Chamber. We're searching for dragons this morning. Did you find any? We haven't found any dragons, but later on today, we're going to find a whole bunch of crocodiles in a river because we're going for a boat trip and hopefully fingers crossed we might even see some dolphins isn't that amazing yeah do you know what i am loving this morning fresh air yes and Go for it. when did you last hear birds like this yeah and hear the birds it's definitely the morning chorus isn't it it's incredible beautiful really beautiful what balm for the soul yeah it is we even saw stars last night everybody that's mm. um that's the first Magic. Yeah. Right, let's have some breakfast. Oh, so we are off this morning for a heritage village walk and also a visit to some really beautiful looking ghats and temples. Hey, okay, so Lord Shiva is the destroyer lord. And these are Lord Shiva's ghats, Bateshwa. 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 Um, there is in the past about 101 temples. At the moment, there's about 35 temples are good for visit. Okay. And the, all of temples the dead to the Lord Shiva, and all temples just on the bank of Holy River Yamuna. The Yamuna River making S. I mean, the coming to the north, like turn like that, and going to again north, and then again turn, and then ah. going to the south. It's a wonderful place. That's I amazing. Hope you enjoy that place. We're going to enjoy it very much. Yeah. Super <laughs> excited. Great. Thanks, Dad. Let's no, get going. Everybody's ready. <laughs> everybody's ready. Okay. Everybody ready. Everybody ready. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so here's an interesting fact I learned. India is the biggest export of mustard seed oil in the world, followed by the Netherlands, which is so interesting when you consider the size of India and the size of the Netherlands. But anyway, it is mustard flower time at the moment, and it is so beautiful to see these fields of just yellow flowers for as far as I can see. On the train from Jaipur to Agra, if you watched last week's episode, you would have seen it as we were going. It was basically just a sea of yellow flowers. And they've got the same here. Um, and it really, well, it's just you can smell super it. pretty. And you can, they smell lovely, don't mm, they? They really smell good. really, really lovely. It smells kind of like... Not like mustard. I was going to say like mustard. No, they don't. It does. Rubbish. It smells a little bit curry mustard. You think? Yeah. Oh, I thought it smelled like flowers. Oh, all right. Mm, okay. Anyway, temples it is. Temples. We're hoping this little one down here falls asleep whilst oh. we're in the Jeep. Um, so he oh. can have his nap. Nap time. And, and that other one, Crusoe, is super excited because there might be dragons at the temple. Often there are. Often there are. It's the place for dragons. <laughs> that, by the way, is the horn of a bus. <laughs> so this is our well, last couple of days in India proper before we head south and we go and allow our boys to dig in the infinite grains of sand that is Goa. Um, it's definitely the right time and later on in this series from India we're going to be doing an episode that's all about how to travel India with kids and how easy or how difficult it is and we're going to talk to you really candidly about our experiences here in India and well was it the right thing to do with a three-year-old and an 18 month old kid well it's an interesting one certainly I've got bags under my eyes and I'm very much like my boys looking forward to getting down south but before that we're going to really enjoy these next two days of adventure, seeing crocodiles, dolphins, temples, dragons, um, and all sorts of other things. 
sometimes it's really difficult and hard to eat well every single day. It happens to us more than we'd probably like to admit, especially when we're traveling. Which is why we're always super grateful to have AG1 on our side, making sure we're getting everything we need every single day, no matter where we are or what we're doing. AG1 is a science-driven foundational nutrition supplement, which has been a part of our everyday for over a year, and we simply wouldn't be without it. With AG1 super handy pre-portioned travel packs, all we needed to find was eight ounces of nice fresh water, and we could rest assured that we're providing our bodies with all of the vitamins, minerals, pre and probiotics, and adaptogens that we need to function at our very best. Taking care of our immune systems should be a top priority. And if you're looking to simplify your own supplement regime or up your game when it comes to looking after yourself, then please use our unique link in the description below or scan the QR code that's on your screen now. You'll get five free travel packs and a year's supply of AG D3 K2 drops for free. We hope you love it as much as we do. So we've just stopped in the village and we've done a really little drive through and it looks like the most beautiful village with some really beautiful old buildings, incredible architecture and unlike anything else we've seen in India so far, in rural India. Because so, we're going to go for a little walk. We're going to go and explore now. Let's go see what we can find. All right. Is that a win? Ready. That's okay. a win. Fast asleep and looking incredibly comfy and cozy. Oh. Look at that. I think it's about the... Uh, 300 year old. It is the ground floor of the building and it wow. is a Hindu architecture it's completely. It's and then beautiful. if you see the first floor, this is a completely the British influence of the buildings. Okay. Yeah. This is the most exquisite building. So Gaj has just been saying to me that this, this lower part is about 350 years old. The top bit is about 150 years old. And this building, so that is all glass and mirror work. And then there's the kind of vegetable paintings up there, like they've got in the Taj Mahal. Place. I mean, not the Taj Mahal, 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 but Amber Palace. Amber Fort. Amber yeah. Fort. Yeah. Um, and this is, we're hearing this over and over again, that this building is owned by a family who have 700 members. 700 people own this building. How on earth do you get so many people to come to one decision? And so buildings like this across India are just falling into disrepair and will one day no longer be here which is a and i mean it's a total tragedy but how fortunate are we to be here to see it it's exquisite yeah, look at the doors i'm uh, as everybody knows i really like wood can you imagine picking up that door and and obviously you know moving it to portugal is probably not the right thing to do but you know in my head i would really love to pick that door up Give it a new life. Yeah, yeah. Portugal, it's like it? Maria's doors that she gave us from yeah. um, from Porto. Yeah. You know, these these are beautiful. They've got a lot of history. Three hundred years old, you say? Gosh. Incredible. See, anybody who thinks wood can't last very long, there's great evidence. I mean, the carvings are still perfect. It's like stone. The name of this village is Holi Pura, and in 2015, the Indian government declared it a heritage village, and you can see why. I think you should. You'd be very good at it. Imagine that was the door to your house. Oh, it doesn't. It could be. It's amazing, isn't it? Look at this one, and all very unique and very different. 
and they go like the, what I love as well. It's hard to get in this street because it's so narrow, but like as you go up the the, the first floors, you know, look at the balustrade of this one here. It's on the balconies and all the first floors are just as ornate and beautiful as the second. This is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, beautiful place. Totally unexpected as well. I had no idea. Amazing. The houses in in the you know the Cotswolds perhaps. Look at that door. Do you know? The more I look at these houses, the more I just think it's an absolute travesty that somebody isn't doing something with them. We are renovating a property in Portugal, and what we're trying to do in Portugal is make it heritagely succinct with the history of the region. So we're going to be building big granite walls and using local materials. Imagine getting your teeth stuck into a project like this. You know? Can you? Man, you could go crazy with a building like that, can you? I wonder, I love like thinking about who stood on that balcony, you know? Who was the last person to walk out the door yeah, and close and it close and just it. say goodbye? Yeah. You know, and, and why, why haven't they ever been back? Yeah. Must have been a long time ago that they did that, huh? What a, what a place. Beautiful. I have to wonder if people even still realise that they own these places or if it's just, they're so long gone that the family's forgotten, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, the family just doesn't believe there's value in it because it's broken. It's such a funny thing because where we come from this, you know, there is such a big drive to restore buildings like this, isn't it? And mm. our, our world is one of projects and restoration and... Um, cherishing, like, and cherishing history. history and that yeah. kind of thing. And I'm just, sure it's the same here. I, oh, but it definitely I, is. It I'd imagine. Is. I, don't, I don't mean to be like, I don't want to offend anyone by, by kind of assuming that it's not, because it definitely is. But I just can't imagine my family owning a place like this and not doing anything with it. But then my family's never owned something like this. So I don't know, you know, that every family's got its story. It's just. Do you know what the obstacles are here? I'm confident that the obstacle is finance. Yeah, yeah. For sure. You know, just, just finance. Crusoe sleeps. Yeah, I mean, if we all could sleep like Crusoe, honestly, we would all live forever. If Sawyer could sleep like Crusoe, we would be a lot brighter. Yeah. Well, he gets it a little bit later in yeah, life. So we will. Crusoe is the best sleeper. Right, next stop on our rather foggy day out is the Batishvar Ghats. Excited to learn more about this place. Okay. I will take you for the man temple. There we will like to can do the worship of the Lord Shiva's and the, all the temples from different time from the different peoples. Shiva yeah. is the destroyer. Yeah, destroyer Lord. He's, he's the naughty Lord. Uh, we, I can't say. No. He's, he's <laughs> so nice uh, Lord because you know, so, if so, we do Lord little bit worship, yeah. and Lord Shiva is become happy soon. Okay. And then he give you lots of boons. Okay. So in our, our epics is a lots of uh, uh, God, goddesses and peoples, they got uh, many boons from the Lord Shiva. Okay. Hinduism as a religion is such a happy, jolly religion with, with all of the colours and all of the peace, I think. Mm. You know, it's a good religion, I think. It's, it's a beautiful religion. It's, yeah. a great, it's a great religion. Great so religion. this behind me is the Yamuna River. She was the middle daughter of Lord Brahma. 
this is a very holy place for the Hindus, Gaj has been telling us. And in the ravines of the river, which is a kind of big area around here, there are a lot of holy men and women living, people who've devoted their life to, you know, the, the religious side of things. And they live in caves in the side of the ravines. It's fascinating. It really is a fascinating religion. And this is a beautiful river. Gaj, is this the river we'll be going on later in the boat? No, that's a Chambal. Chambal, ah, river. cool, different river. Yamuna River. So John's going to stay at the car with Crusoe while he sleeps and I'm going to wander down here with Gadge to go and see the gats. In the hotel there's some beautiful photographs of these at sunset and you can see them really clearly. Um, but it's kind of cool in the mist, it's very very atmospheric. Lovely. just stepped inside one of these temples and these paintings are over 300 years old. How extraordinary is that? We've just got a blessing from a priest, which was pretty special. Sadly didn't film it because John's not here, but um, you know, it's one of those moments you just submit to memory, don't you? This is a really magical place. It smells amazing as well. This smells really nice. Yeah, very nice. What's it made from? It's uh, sandalwood ah, and uh, kumkum. Okay. And some from the natural, some from the industries. <laughs> okay. Oh, there you go. This is the mantle floor. So you want to go inside? We need to take off shoes. Okay. We just come out of the temple and the sun is shining. Well, it's getting there anyway, it's starting to burn off the fog. So it bodes well for a beautiful afternoon on the boat. But I actually found that quite amazing. I had a couple of blessings. Um, one of the holy men gave me a really beautiful, beautiful blessing. And it really, like it really moved me. I don't know, that was really special. It's incredible to be so welcomed warmly into places that are so holy, you know, to people whose beliefs are different to your own. and not feel like you're not supposed to be there or that they don't want you there. Um, I don't know, I'm feeling really genuinely very privileged to be here right now. Do you know what I love about this experience? Is we are the only like foreigners here. That's not something we've had in India, and it, that is incredibly special. It feels, I don't know, magical, different. I feel really, 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 really grateful this morning. Good. Right, locked and loaded, and heading for home. Heading for home. Lunch. Maybe, uh, maybe the weather clears up this afternoon. We Looks can go like out for a gonna, boat. Hey. Well, yeah, absolutely right. We, we, we go to lunch, and then you can have a lunch. And after lunch, then we start for the boat. boat. Excellent. Perfect. Yeah. Yay! Excited. What a lovely that, day. Yeah, that was beautiful, wasn't it? That really was. There's some very special I'm moments there. You know, yeah, yeah, whether you're right. whether you're inclined to believe in a god, whichever god that might be, or not. There's something quite important about the respect for other mm. types of beliefs and other faiths. Um, and I, you know, the world would just be a better place, I think, if everybody could, could just accept that people think differently from yeah. other people. It's so true. Um, that was a lovely experience. I genuinely felt moved by that. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah.
made it to the Chambal Nature Sanctuary. This is the Chambal River. It is apparently the cleanest river in the region. And four, it's a 900 kilometer river and a 400 kilometer stretch of it is in this nature sanctuary and is protected. Which is pretty exciting. I think it's the only nature reserve we've been in, isn't it? That's yeah. right, yeah. What are we going to see? We're going on a boat and we're going to see hopefully crocodiles, turtles. I forget the name of the bird, but it's a special bird. Okay. And if we're really lucky, the Ganges River Dolphin. Oh my goodness, imagine. Yeah, imagine. Yeah, really exciting. Let's, Let's go. Do it. Come on, Cruzo. Come on, Soya. Soya, come on. Let's go. I'm coming, don't worry. We will, we will, yeah. River is so deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I told you, this is the cleanest of this region. And your right side, this is the Uttar Pradesh, and your left side is the Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. And now we are going in the upper stream. And I will be a spot for the wild. And left side, you know, 11, 10, 9, 15. So I've never done a safari anywhere outside of Africa um, and I can really see how this could become really addictive, this kind of pursuit of wildlife in different places because I'm getting such a kick out of learning that the birds have come from Russia and you know Tibet and stuff and that the, well, the, gar the gharials, the gharials only come from India and Nepal and we're hoping we're going to see a Ganges river dolphin like those are things that I would never have thought I'd ever see in my life. It's so cool. I already feel myself thinking, huh, okay, next time we come back to India, we find other, you know, what else is there to see? Or where have we travel? What is there to see? That's wildlife and not just the main sites, the people. And I think that's what I've really loved the most about these couple of days is that we've got really, like, we're on the tourist trail, but we're off it. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's also... We've it, seen stuff that we've, I don't know, I just... This feels blow me away. Th this safari, this kind of safari, also feels a little bit more gentle, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it's authentic. Like, as opposed to the, the the safari we went on to see the leopards. Yeah, yeah, way better. Totally different. Different experience. Totally different. Beautiful note. Let's probably call it a day. 